Before today's video, I have a quick word from our partners at The Sojourn Audio Drama, as it is now available to purchase on Spotify. If it's not yet visible in your region, it will be soon, so keep an eye out. If you're unsure of what it even is, you can also visit their YouTube channel for free samples and lore videos. The Sojourn, now available on Spotify. Hey everyone, I'm Hujiwana and this is Space Dock, where today I am taking a look at some of the visual inspirations a lot of artists use when designing their spacecraft. The big three here are naval vessels, aircraft, and function over form. Naval influence is obviously everywhere in sci-fi, especially as we even call them ships. It's hard to get any more influence than straight up taking their name. In terms of design though, it can be extremely obvious like with the Yamato, or a bit more subtle, coming through in nomenclature and traditions instead of outright visuals. The Enterprise may not look like a ship, but the way the crew work included a bosun's whistle and that sort of thing. The other naval route is to take inspiration from submarines, but I did a video on that already. Much of how sci-fi spacecraft are portrayed is also naval, like the way they move and fight, which is taken straight from the pages of history with torpedoes and big broadsides at ridiculously short ranges. This all comes largely from the influence World War II had on the world, and the following portrayals of what happened there. I've spoken about this before in reference to fighter combat, go check that video out too if you haven't already, and fighters is generally where the aircraft inspiration tends to end up. There are some exceptions though, such as the flight model in the Orville, which does have some sideways flight going on in the pilot, but generally things zoom about like a plane would. The two versions of Mass Effect's Normandy are also very much based on high performance aircraft like the SR-71. However, it's pretty rare for something to be inspired by helicopters, and if they are it's usually as some sort of utility transport, though my beloved Gunstar is one notable exception. As for function over form spacecraft, this generally ends up being those on the harder end of sci-fi, as going down that route tends to mean ignoring outside influence entirely. In those settings that dial back the realism here and there though, other styles can find their way back in, and due to the realities of thrust gravity, these can sometimes end up looking like buildings. Which brings me around to the bulk of what I want to talk about today, using architecture as inspiration for spacecraft designs. I had a think about it and this happens more than I first realised. There's obvious things like gold ships being pyramids, but our spooky ships video in October had a lot of this going on. First there's the USS Cygnus, and its enormous structure is reminiscent of 19th century glass and iron buildings, like the destroyed Crystal Palace or various greenhouses. The massive interior space that runs down the core of the ship gives me Paddington Station vibes as well, and I feel this aesthetic is really overlooked as being old fashioned where most sci-fi wants to be either clean and iPoddy or dirty and lived in. Which is a bit of a shame because I think you can probably have both with a bit of this ornate 19th century stuff going on as well. I mean the Eiffel Tower is damn near a spaceship already, though it's not necessary to go that far, especially in harder sci-fi stuff. More realistic ship designs can often have truss work and substructures of that nature, and they can make very good use of wrought iron tracery style designs. Just a small example, but think of radiators supported by elegant tracery rather than a purely functional set of girders, and then extrapolate that out to a whole ship with those sorts of details. That would look great! You could even lean real hard into that style with big train-like water propellant tanks and nuclear thermal rockets to make it into steam, or go even harder into that look and straight up have trains in space like in sunless skies, but that derails the discussion from architecture. To get back on track, the Spooky Ships video had two other ships that both took very blatant inspiration from cathedrals and castles and other big stonework structures. They each did it in different ways, but the Ishimura in particular looks very cathedrally from outside with its two large towers towards the rear, and the front section of the ship with those curved panelly type things that evoke images of flying buttresses. It's fantastic, and one of the many reasons why I love that ship so much. That idea of infusing vessels with gothic architecture is really cool, and I can't say that without invoking Warhammer 40k, can I? Specifically Imperial Navy ships, both pre and post Horus Heresy, which are very heavily armed mobile cathedrals, which pretty much describes like half of the Imperium's vehicles. 
Another gothic style ship, unless I'm just misremembering since it's been a while since I last read it, is the Nostalgia for Infinity from Revelation Space. Though that thing is like 4 kilometers in length, so the gothic styling there is going to be so small it won't really be that visible. That's enough of the gothic star, which we can see has had plenty of influence, so what about, uh, insect buildings? Can termites create architecture? Because that's what Mass Effect's collector vessel and station are both based on. But this is a bit of a stretch, so let's move on to one of my favourite architectural styles Mass Effect utilises, but not for ships, brutalism. And the big example here is naturally Dune. Brutalism is everywhere in that film, especially on Arrakis, where massive ugly buildings are needed to keep out the heat. The spacecraft though, the few that we see at least, are also largely in this style. The Atreides craft, the enormous Highliner, all just so good. A lot like 33 Thomas Street, or the Buffalo City Court building, with the edges and texture of those buildings, but with their own unique shape. However, much like how brutalist buildings can very easily end up being bad, ugly, and a blight on their surroundings, it is very easy to mess this up when transferring across to spacecraft. The Singapore power building may look interesting on the ground, but translated to a ship it would end up being kind of a lame grey space brick. There's also architectural styles that look like spaceships. Mercury City Tower is pretty much already a UNSC cruiser or something, and that gets filed under structural expressionism. This style, as the name implies, emphasises the structural elements in the building's construction. For some reason, the best examples of this are all bank buildings, like the HSBC main building, or the Bank of China Tower. There's also the very striking Lloyds building in London, which is the home of an insurance company that goes back to insuring ships in the age of sail. Some similar buildings that would also be great inspiration for spacecraft are a lot of broadcast towers, which are very slender and often have all sorts of antennas and things all over them. Some fun examples I like here are the Oriental Pearl Tower in Shanghai, and the Berlin Television Tower, which surprisingly is right in the middle of Berlin. They both have a sort of realistic look to them with how thin and rocket-like they are, with the round ball part on them that could very well be propellant tanks or something. There's also the Austin Kino Tower in Moscow, which is very green in a way, and just look at this drone shot going down its length and tell me this isn't a spaceship moving past the camera. It's so cool! And not only is this long style of ship neat looking, it's also pretty realistic, as there's a big reason why real spacecraft designs may end up being a big long noodle. I talked about this way back in January in the ISV Venture Star video, but radiation from engines is a huge factor that needs to be considered, and being far away from them is a very easy way of mitigating those risks. If you want to make a ship that is super long but don't want this trussy, greebly look, then skyscrapers in general can make for a great source of inspiration. Like the never-built Mile High Illinois by Frank Lloyd Wright, which I think looks amazing. This vast, glittering needle with foundations that look somewhat like a giant Ares bike engine. Likewise, the Burj Khalifa is also a ready-made spacecraft design, but in a neo-futuristic style. Neo-futurism, more than most other styles, is where spacecraft and architecture really blend together, especially where super-futuristic stuff is involved, like in the Orville or in Star Trek Discovery's 32nd century ships. There are far more types of architecture out there though. If you're designing a ship, then have a little look around and see what grabs your interest. Integrate a bit of Art Deco, or hell, even take some shapes from log cabins. That'll make an interesting superstructure. Even the most unlikely combinations can look absolutely stunning, like this incredible piece by Holly Jenka, which mixes hard sci-fi tech like laser turrets, magnetic nozzles, and big radiators with Victorian Gothic. It's gorgeous, and demonstrates my point about using buildings as inspiration perfectly. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share it around. If you really enjoyed the video and want to support Space Dog more directly, you can join our Patreon like those on screen now, or support us through YouTube by giving a super thanks or by becoming a channel member. Huge thanks to those who do any of these already, and I'll see you next time.